welcome to the Advance Your Art podcast, where we talk about the journey from artist to entrepreneur and everything in between. You've worked hard to hone your craft. Now take it to the next level with tips, techniques, strategies, and routines used by successful artists to grow their businesses and careers. Now, let's get started and have some fun with your host, Yuri Cataldo. Well, hello, podcast listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Advance Your Art Podcast. I'm your host, Yuri Cataldo. Today, I'm sitting down with Sasha Frank, who is an artist, writer, and vintage-style blogger. Sasha, welcome to the show. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. It's my pleasure. So, Sasha, tell me about yourself. So, as you mentioned, um, I am a, a author, um, and I express myself in just different mediums through uh, vintage style, um, through book writing, blogging, all of that. For the longest time, I suppressed that. So I've come to this place where I'm like, I need to express myself in every which way that I've been gifted to do so. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be able to reach those in a way that they are able to be reached in a way that they're able to learn. And um, by telling my story, pretty much. And That's what I want to do is share my story to help uplift people, Mm -hmm. because as I always say, as we share our journeys, we heal and we also help people along the way. Sure. Excellent. So, okay, let's start from the beginning. Vintage style (laughs) blogger. What does that mean? So um, I am really, really infatuated with the 50s and the 40s and the 60s. And so... um, I just really started going thrifting a couple years ago, vintage consignment stores, and just really compiling different looks from the 50s. And that's pretty much all of my closet, what it is right now. And so um, what I do is I post my photos of the 50s looks, and I just kind of put inspirational messages on there as well. Okay, excellent. That's great. I'm guessing, and you... um... What medium then? So do you put this out on on Instagram, um, on your blog, or where do people see that? Yes, I primarily use Instagram, but I also use my blog as well. Okay, okay, both places. Very cool. Okay, so (laughs) so you mentioned that part of what you'd like to do is is help people by sharing your experience. So yes. So tell me about your experience. So um, when I graduated the economy pretty much plummeted. And so I found myself trying to find a job Mm -hmm. and I just found myself one of the many people who slipped through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, really hard to get what I wanted and everything that I thought that I needed. Once I got it, I found out that it was definitely not what I wanted. And so I wanted to start sharing my journey so I can help people navigate their life after college, Mm -hmm. because most people have this perception of it being a certain way. And yes, it might happen that way for some people, but there are a lot of times where it doesn't look the way that you anticipate it to. Mm -hmm. And you have to be okay with that. And you just have to be more flexible and know that it's not going to always look the way that you expect it to. But you can still find joy and happiness. And learn to create in the process. That's wonderful. So what, let's go a little bit back. What were you going to school for prior to the crash? I, I'm guessing the, the this crash, is that, that the 2009 financial crash? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I was going to school for marketing at the time. Prior okay. to that, it was fashion. Sure. But yeah, so it's marketing. Okay, excellent. <laughs> so you and I have something a little bit in common. I was yes. so I was in I was in grad school and and I I graduated in 2008 so I had about a year before suddenly the career I was uh, I was pursuing which was um, theater de- theatrical design at the time suddenly was no longer an option so you graduated just in time to not get any jobs is that correct <laughs> right so okay so what did you do then so you graduate suddenly there's nothing available what did you do 
Honestly, I I do the only thing that I know to do. Like I continue to just, you know, um, reach out to different places, apply. Like I've probably did so many applications. I don't even know, like in the Mm -hmm. thousands, thousands. And, um, you know, I even tried to do like entry level jobs in retail that I, I never really worked in before and just like other jobs outside of what I thought I should have. And still, it was still no luck with anything. And it kind of forced me to move back home with my parents and just life looked completely different than what I expected it to. And it was just really, really hard to navigate. And um, in that process, I learned to get back into creating what I always wanted to do. And I started to go back to school for music and um, writing and just getting creative and learning to express myself in ways that obviously I didn't have the words to say, but I knew how to cr- express myself to, to say those words. <laughs> yeah. So what was it about? I mean, so it's, that's interesting that you chose that. I mean, oftentimes people would go the opposite way. So let's say mm-hmm. whatever they were studying for. And, and I know I'm, I went the opposite way. So my, mm-hmm. my career in a creative industry failed. So I went the more business route because it was, mm-hmm. you know, the, the more stable, you know, whatever, fill in, fill in the blank kind of yeah. easy or not even easier. Yeah, maybe easier route. Um, and that's <laughs> the way I went because that's just made sense to me at the time. But you mm-hmm. went the opposite way and, and you chose <laughs> um, a harder, probably less less traveled path into the arts. So what yes. was it about the arts at that time? that you didn't pursue in college that you were, that you decided that now this is the time that you need to do this. You know what the funny thing is like initially when I was choosing careers or different, you know, uh, programs, I wanted to do music, but my parents always said to have a backup plan. Mm -hmm. So somehow in the process, like my backup plan became my main plan. And so I was always supposed to go into music, but it just never happened. Okay. And um, and honestly, you know, it's funny how this happened, because before going back into music, I was actually kind of doing like prereq courses for like speech pathology. And then I was considering getting an MBA um, at a program that I had just got it accepted into. But I my heart wasn't into it. So like I, I didn't want to move all the way to London and like not have my heart into it and, you know, miss out on this opportunity that who knows what could have happened. Right. Right. Well, excellent. Okay. So, so you went and you started looking into and studying music and writing. So Mm -hmm. when was it in this process that you decided that you wanted to write a book? Wow. Um, That's actually funny as well. Um, During college, my undergrad year, I think my sophomore year, I actually remember going on a family vacation and I just documented the whole entire thing. And so um, when I went back to my dorm after the summer, I told myself, um, you know, to get onto the computer and I start writing and like typing this thing out. And then I was thinking to myself, you know, one day I'm going to write a book. That's what I said. And, you know, flash. Yeah. And so um, (laughs) and so after, you know, going back to school and like, you know, moving back that whole entire journey, um, you know, after graduating. I wanted to document that entire thing and pretty much the memoirs about my navigating life after college, me going back to school, me like experiencing the ups and downs and just really, really facing head on different hurts that I've experienced and um, different experiences that made me into who I am. Sure. Okay. Excellent. And so um, I know your book recently came out, right? At the end of March? Um, I actually pushed it back a little bit. So oh. right now it's on pre-sales, but, oh. um, but yes, initially it was supposed to be March, but I did push it back. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay. So it's, so it's, it's being pushed back right now and pre-orders are on Amazon. Is that correct? It's on Amazon as well as my website. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious about the title. So 
<laughs> it is called Introducing Sasha Frank. Why did you yes. decide to name the book after yourself? I mean, I know that you're the subject of the book, but specifically, what was the, the impetus to the title? I know. It, it's crazy how that happened as well. Um, mm-hmm. I took a memoir writing class when I first started going back to school. Mm-hmm. And um, so in the class, we had to write a memoir just for fun. And so I initially thought that was going to be the memoir that I used, but I had to start from scratch. I just mm-hmm. scraped the whole thing, took some ideas, whatnot. But um, so one night I was thinking of different titles and I came up with introducing Sasha Frank and I was going back and forth and I'm trying to debate. And then I look at the book that I did, you know, back then and on the, the book, like, cover page it says introducing Sasha Frank and I was like okay well I guess that is already done okay yeah. so I, I didn't want to argue with that <laughs> I just kept it as introducing Sasha Frank <laughs> ah, excellent excellent <laughs> so okay so so this then product has come out what was it like in the writing process did you uh, were you were you hit with any you know any times where you were stuck? Did you get any writer's block? You know you're you're putting yourself out there in a very <laughs> um, you know written and and big big way. What did it feel like going through that process? Wow. Um, honestly, it was therapeutic to me. And um, prior to that, I was starting to journal. I was blogging. I was kind of getting my emotions out there, anyways. And so. It was it was natural for the this book. And it wasn't until like I got to like maybe the middle parts of the book where I started to relive different emotions that I, you know, didn't remember were there Mm -hmm. that um, it started to get a little bit um, intense because, you know, I had to, again, come face to face with different things that maybe I had hidden or didn't know was there. And that's definitely a part of the growing process in general. You have to come head on head, face to face with those things that you bury. And that's initially what I want people to do is to come face to face with things that they initially bury so that they can grow and be the person that they're they're always meant to be. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So with this, this process, what I guess if, if you could talk to your pre-graduation undergrad college <laughs> self what would you tell yourself to do or to, you know to change or not change at that time mm-hmm. um, I would say to follow your heart and instead of trying to seek after temporary things like the money the status the titles you know follow your heart and everything else will come excellent so it's it's interesting because in I guess in that sense you were so would you say that in college you were trying to get more of a uh, you know a, a status and not following your heart is that is that what how you would best describe your college days I think so um we get to a place where we just kind of we do want the titles. We do want VP of whatever on our, you know, business card. Mm -hmm. We do want to have like, you know, a well-known company and all of that stuff. And instead of looking at what we actually really want, we start to look at external things, things that don't really matter and um, basing it off of that instead of the meat of what life is really about. (laughs) Sure. Sure. (laughs) So what is the meat of what life is really about? Um, I really believe it's about following purpose. Um, I remember telling a story, this story to my friend. It might actually be in the book as well. Mm-hmm. But um, basically, I remember, you know, just sitting on this clear blue day, like it was perfect summer day. And like thinking to myself, like, what's the purpose of life? And I started bawling like, crazily and thinking like, you know, is it just to live and to die? Like, you know, why did you place me on this earth just to live and to die? And um, I just couldn't figure it out. And it wasn't until like I actually started to, you know, go in this path that I feel like God had created.